This is Echo 3, and by request, let's discuss how to find Easter eggs in the game. Vincent van Ardwig requested that I show how to get to some of the Easter eggs that we were able to discover in the last video. The last video was where I showed how to use CurbNet. Well, we're going to use CurbNet in this video, and we're going to land next to one of the Easter eggs that we're able to find. What I'm making right now is just a very simple little lander. In this case, this is going to go to the MUN, and all it's got to do is land on the MUN next to the Easter egg that we're going to try and find. So it just has enough engine and fuel. Actually, it's got way more than enough than we need, but I like to have some extra to make some corrections on the way down so we can land exactly where we want to. This specific probe core actually has the best chance of a finding anomalies in the game, so that's why I'm using it. I have a little bit of a uh, relay antenna there, so I have a little better communication back to Kerbin from the surface. I'm adding a little bit of extra fuel because this stage is going to finish our circularization around Kerbin, transfer to the MUN, and get us into orbit. And then the top section there is just for the descent. This really should be about all we need. We'll throw on maybe a little bit of solar panels. Uh, really don't need too much. We're not landing crew or anything. This isn't a return mission. I'm just going to bind the antenna and the solar panel deployment to an action group so it's a little easier for me to handle that. And that's pretty much all we need to do to make this craft function. I'll throw on some struts. This will make the launch stage just a little easier if I strut some of these pieces together. Um, it'll keep the payload from wobbling in the payload bay here. Um, I'm just going to throw this in a big fairing. Nothing. This is not a very difficult craft or anything. This is pretty easy to replicate, but the goal of this is to be able to find the Easter eggs in the game and land next to them. In this case, we are going to go to the MUN, and we are going to find one, well, we'll find multiple. We'll only land next to one Easter egg, and I'll show that to you. Um, this will be one of the more well-known Easter eggs. I don't want to give away any spoilers. There's a lot of really interesting things to find out in the Kerbal system. Uh, this is the Bobcat engine. It's a uh, seem to be about the right engine as far as the thrust to weight ratio of the engine. Uh, it'll pretty well get this craft into orbit. Um, then the rest of the craft will be able to do the rest of the mission. I'll put a little bit of fins down here. Just help with the aerodynamics of the craft. It's very aerodynamic. This will just add a little bit of extra stability on the ascent stage. And we are pretty well done. Let's launch this thing towards the MUN. Our launch is going to be a pretty typical launch profile. If you have any questions on how to launch into low Kerbin orbit, I do have some tutorials where I talk about that. In this case, this is pretty standard for me. Just really, the key is velocity, trying to get up to 2300 meters per second. And we'll deploy our solar panels and we'll be all set. Now we'll go ahead and finish our circularization burn. I'll do most of it with our ascent stage and finish with our upper stage here. Now we just plot our maneuver out to the MUN. In this case, it's going to take about 840 meters per second of delta V to get out there. We're in a pretty high orbit, which is nice because our craft doesn't have a really high thrust to weight ratio. Um, once you're in space, in orbit, your thrust to weight ratio matters a lot less. It's mostly an important thing for landing and, and takeoff. So an altitude around uh, 100,000 meters above the surface will do well for our scan. Um, we'll be able to pretty well see the entire surface of the MUN with the scan sat with this particular field of view. Uh, the, again, the other tutorial I did on this talks about all the equations you might want to look at to find the right altitude for scanning. I do want to be in a very low orbit. Nice thing about a low orbit, I will be orbiting more quickly and have a better chance of finding things. And right off the bat, an anomaly has popped up. Now, on my curb net screen, you can see there is an option to place a waypoint. So when I see the question mark appear on the screen, I click on the question mark and select place waypoint. Now on my map, there is a waypoint that I will be able to target for future missions. 
So we're going to go ahead and see what else we can find. So I'm going to go ahead and speed up the game, and I will also speed up footage and just make this a little quicker for everyone. But the idea here is we're going to try and find as many anomalies as we can here in our orbit. If you notice there too, our, for our curb net to work, we do have to have direct comms back with Kerbin, so when we went behind the MUN and there wasn't a relay there to take the signal all the way back, we lost connection. So we'll only be able to find anomalies on the near side of the MUN. But we'll keep looking because I know there are more things that we can find. Matter of fact, there's actually quite a few anomalies on the MUN that uh, there's some really interesting Easter eggs that I would recommend people check out. It's just kind of fun and interesting. I wish in some cases there was more story to go along with it. If you get a contract pack that might go along with, say, the ScanSat mod, then you can actually have contracts to go land at some of these different Easter eggs. So that's kind of fun. Gives you a game purpose to go and, and do that. Otherwise, there isn't any like science rewards necessarily or um, any other kind of points to get for finding these things but they are kinda cool I mean it's it's a reason to explore I mean, if you're in a sandbox game why do you just explore the planets or moons there's a lot of interesting things out there the MUN has quite a few and uh, you can see our curbnet scanner has picked up three anomalies already that we might want to check out we're going to just go ahead and pick this one that we found first. Again, this is one of the more common uh, anomalies that people talk about. There's actually multiple of these on the MUN. So I'm going to be less of a spoiler here for anyone who hasn't seen this. But on the other side, there are lots of interesting things on Duna. And we could land there and check those things out. And if you go to the Jewel system, some of those moons have some really interesting things to check out as well. So, if you have never gone and tried to find these anomalies before and these different Easter eggs in the game, I would encourage you to go out and do that. They're, they're fun. So, as you can see, we are descending upon, and I probably already know, this is the Mun Arch that we are going to find. One of the Mun Arches. There are actually uh, more than one that you can find. So as we descend here, I'm just going to take my time and try to be very careful. I have a waypoint that will get me pretty close. I didn't necessarily click exactly on the anomaly. So I know I'm going to be very close to where I'm going to land. So once I get almost overhead in that area, I'm going to try and use a lot of visual. I'm just going to be looking down here on the surface to make sure I land in just the right spot. So if you keep your eyes peeled, it is very close um, here in the screen, close to the center of the screen where this anomaly is, and you should be seeing the MUN arch start to appear. I am also using parallax, so if my surface looks different than maybe the surface of the MUN on your screen, well, that'd be because of the mods I'm running. Uh, other than that, you can see I'm running Kerbal Engineer, um, but that's... Uh, really, I'm running mostly visual mods with Kerbal Engineer being the only mod that just helps me find information. Now we're going to start to slow down and keep our eyes open for that MUN arch. It should be pretty much right underneath us. And I see it. We're going to kind of pass over it, but we're going to go ahead and just adjust our craft. We've got plenty of fuel and uh, lots of torque with our reaction wheels on this thing so this is really easy to control and that's one thing to note the smaller you can make a craft usually the better just the less mass uh, you have to deal with the easier the craft is to fly um, you just don't need as much fuel I don't need as many solar panels I don't need as many engines so generally smaller is better and here is the Mun Arch one of many of the Easter eggs included in the game I hope that I have inspired you to go and check some of these things out as there are a lot of cool things to see in this game and hopefully in KSP2 there will be as well. I am Echo3. Thanks for joining me for the discussion on how to find Easter eggs. I will see you next time.